This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey! What's up, guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video over on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2, playing with Mermels yet again, the Link-based Mermel deck, the Link Combo Heavy deck. Uh, I'm going second. I have Teus, cards to remove cards from the field, and then Ash. That seems pretty good. Uh, my opponent is setting three with six cards in the extra deck. I hope to God that I'm not playing against that dumb Cyframe person again. Because I would actually be very upset. <laughs> upset would be the least of my, uh, of my capabilities. Okay, so let's see. Um, this is a you can, and this is mandatory. Meaning, I can discard Hild, right? And summon Teus. And uh, the Teus effect will be mandatory chain link one, and then Hild will be chain link two, which means that uh, which means that Hild will resolve first, summoning this other Teus out of my hand, and then I get to add Osha and normal summon it. Where is it? Osha's here. Well, I could add Osha and normal summon it, or I could just add Gund, and Gund would be pretty good as well because I could uh, I could just make flare metal in the in these and do stuff. Do silly things. Do shilly things. Hmm. Questions. I can make Galaxy Tomahawk and start doing links. That's actually a viable option as well. Which is why I will add the gun. Because if I do Galaxy Tomahawk, right? Then I should be able to force my way through whatever these are. It's really late at night, so I don't know if, uh, if the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro community is up to the challenge of dealing with the bullshittery that is what goes on in my mind. Um, alright, come on. Come on. Respond to my card. Respond! No! Why have you not responded? This is not how you win games. Um, well, now I can't do any more battle damage for the rest of the turn. So, I guess what we're just gonna do is we're gonna start making cards. I can, uh, I can immediately make these into a Gaia Saber, and then I can make these into a Proxy Dragon, uh, just to give protection for, like, board presence. Uh, or I could just, like, leave my entire field, <laughs> um, and just turn all of these Galaxy Tomahawk tokens to attack position next turn and just kill my opponent. There's a few different options. Um, but... What I am going to do is I can make uh, I can make Link Spider here, but I don't want to. I can make Firewall somewhere. I can make Proxy here. Um, I haven't normal summoned yet, so that's a that's a thing that I can do. I can make uh, Megalo go off. I can make a Flare Metal. Um, in fact, I think I just want to keep these tokens. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna make I'm gonna try and force a Flare Metal and see what happens. Um. Because, honestly, if any of these back row eat the Megalo, the gun floating back the, uh, the Teus will allow me to make Firewall and then bounce cards anyway. So, um, that's worthwhile to note. And then Gund will trigger, and then I get my Sphere. So I actually just get a lot of cards here. Um, well, this, this is mandatory. So why is this? Oh, okay, it's not even giving me an option. Okay, I thought it was asking me to like choose that as one of my chain link orders. Um, so we will summon back this, the the uh, Teus, the Teus. And so now it's fine. Um, even if like this gets like striked or something, which at this point it probably should have been striked earlier. Um. I have plenty of options. What are these six cards in my opponent's extra deck? And I can't remember what the username of the person that was playing Cyframes was uh, when I played against it playing World Chalice. But it was about the same time of the night when I played that person as it is now. And that's not something I'm gonna enjoy. <laughs> if I'm completely real with you, um, yeah, fuck it. We're gonna make the Flare Metal. Because I can't do battle damage this turn. So I'm going to make Flare Metal, I'm going to set Sphere. And I'm going to see if my opponent just burns himself to death. And if he doesn't... My tokens go away?! I've never read this far of the car- What? 
Destroy them during the end phase of this turn. I've actually never registered that part of that card text. This is a new occurrence to me. I should have made a proxy dragon. I should have summoned the Megalo, summoned this over in a zone. I done goofed. <laughs> I have never processed that part of the card text. I was like, surely these things just stay, right? Uh, Dark Room of Nightmare. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! I made a burn card against a burn deck! <laughs> oh no! Alright. I see you. You're playing the fucking trickster deck. Big boy! Um, this is gonna be interesting. Yep. 200. Uh huh. This effect activates, so this should trigger flare metal, right? So I'll take another 300. And then you'll take five, right? It's Carter Effect, yeah? Trickster Reincarnation. Um, you know what? How many cards do I have? Do I have, uh... I have four Waters in Grave. I'm going to negate that with Ash Blossom. Specifically because... Alright, cool. Alright, well now I'm losing this Mulin. 200. 500. 500. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. I'm doing more burn damage to him than he is to me. This is ridiculous. Oh, I love this feeling. This is the feeling that I want out of my Yu-Gi-Oh games. Alright. Okay. Time to see where this lands. I get to punch over this licorice multiple times. Uh, unless this last card that said is literally Mirror Force. Tricksters is just one of those weird decks that just doesn't really seem to... It, it seemed a lot stronger in theory and on paper than it ends up being in practice. I could get Mirror Forced here, and that's going to suck for me. Um, well, if I get regular Mirror Forced, Flare Metal doesn't go away. If I get Stormy Mirror Force, Blazing Mirror Force, I'm actually okay with that. Because this doesn't die. And now you take another five. And now I'm going to take another three. And now you're gonna take another five. Hell yeah! All right. Now I attack this. I'm so I'm so actually pleased with myself right now. I made a flare metal against a burn deck. I love this. Um, I am going to. There's. I don't see any way that he can kill me uh, through burn damage when everything that he he only has three actions left before he dies. He can do, perform two effects. Uh-huh. I literally draw a card and win, right? Oh, now, now it's 100% I draw a card and win. Because he's summoning these. And these will all just chain. These will all just form my flare metal to burn him to death. This was, uh, this was not how I intended this to go. But it works. Works for me, my dude. Link into Trickster, Holy Angel, alright, or Holly Angel, because TCG censorships. Um, yeah, summoning the Licorice, alright, cool, cool my man. I take 200, and then your Dark Room of Nightmare is going to trigger and you take game, right? Um, yeah, now you, now you just take game. <laughs> Fuck. I outburned the burn deck. That's neat. Alright. Okay, so this is the Mermel deck list that I've been playing. Note that I built it in literally five minutes. Um, I'm not playing Nimbles. I'm not playing Swap Frogs or anything like that. Um, I'm going to be going second against this. So I definitely want to side out this. I don't want Lind in my deck. Um, I want Marksmans. I want multiples of those types of cards. Um, and this is a chainable that allows me to take cards out of my hand. This is good. This is all good. Uh, this was a list that I threw together in five minutes. I'm not playing Nimble Beaver because I don't think that card's very good. Honestly, you're uh, you're only making um, Master Boy with it, and honestly, you're not doing much outside of making Master Boy with it. It's not really a good discard. I do really like Nimble Angler though, and I think Nimble Sunfish is probably better. Like the only reason Nimble Beaver would probably be played in my list would be because of Nimble Angler, not because of Beaver itself. Because why am I normal summoning Beaver and not Neptibus? Um that's my thought process um so like it just it, it makes the most sense to me to to 
like not do that. I might want to play frogs. I don't know. This list is kind of tight. I literally threw it together in five minutes. If you don't know how to make a skeleton mermaid list, then I don't know what the hell is going on in this existence or this life. But uh, things need to be addressed. So here is what is going to happen: is that um, is that I'm taking damage here, which is fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this card. I'm going to set this upstart. One, two. I'm going to normal summon Neptibus. Three, I'm going to activate this Megalo, discarding Marksman and uh, Abyssmander to summon itself. Um, and then Marksman will target this. Mirror Force. All right. Cool. Cool beans. Uh, so now I can activate this. Send Dragoons, add Dragoons. That's Marksman! That is not the Dragoons! <laughs> Uh, no, that's not dragoons. Um, all right, well, we'll just activate upstart, draw an ash blossom. All right, that works. Um, yeah, cool. I keep taking burn damage. Um, that was not dragoons. That was a goofy goof. Uh, but so we'll use megalo to do this. This will bring back marksman. Oops. Um. Well, it doesn't actually matter in the long run anyway, because I... Well, it does, because it would have changed what I drew off this, but the Ash Blossom is kind of good, too. Um, there's a few different things that are factors in this. But, this Megalo can attack twice. Uh, so I'm going to attack this. I definitely should be citing, like, the Equip spell uh, for when I take out Sphere, in all honesty. Uh, but, so this gets to attack twice. This gets to attack directly, which will then summon... Um, 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 after? Oh, uh -huh. yes. Um, which can then summon the Dragoons out of my deck, which I can then attack with. Um, I know he has a Candina in his hand. I can't remember what its stats are. Tab. What is Candina's stats? 18. Alright. Um, so we'll do this. We'll attack with this. Uh, throw him down to a significantly lowish number. And then I could make, uh, I could make, uh, da 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 uh, my star boy with these two. And save this, because I have a Dragoon's proc that I can get next turn. Um, and then I could also normal summon it in Megalo. Yeah, alright, we'll just make my star boy. Um, there's no reason to leave these out to get beat over. So yeah, we'll just do this. Man, alright. Well... Okay, so, the thing is, I don't think the Trickster deck is that good. <laughs> That's the thing. It's, uh, it's a deck that has some degenerate things it can do, yes. But those things involve, um, those things involve the, uh, the Reincarnation Draw and Lock play. And they don't involve the actual deck itself. And that should be, like, the key. The key to understanding where I'm coming from. At least that's the thought process. My opponent ends his turn. Fantastic. I win. Good game, duelists. Jame. Alright, I have a Megalo in my hand as well, so I just get to trigger all of my effects. Um, so this triggers adding uh, another heavy infantry, obviously. Why would I not? Um, and then I can activate this. I'm going to get rid of all of his cards. Uh, this is going to be a little bit upsetting. Uh to anyone who likes Tricksters. Because I can get rid of every single card that he owns. Yep, there it is. Like, all I have to do is use this Megalo to tribute the Neptibus to attack twice. This Neptibus brings back Heavy Infantry, and then this Megalo. <laughs> I started spazzing out for a second there. Um, this Megalo gets to tribute the Heavy Infantry that was brought back to hit Dark Room and Nightmare. Um, because I have way too many waters in my graveyard to be thinking about dropping the Moolin Glaze. Uh, and then I can just make, uh, Flare Metal when I'm done if for some reason I don't kill him. Uh, but yeah. This Mermel deck is very, very bare bones basic. So, it's not a list that you were probably waiting for from me. Um, in terms of what you're expecting me to play. But, whatever. <laughs> it's what I'm playing for videos just because of how basic it is. And if you can't build a bare bones skeleton basic Mermel deck, then you should probably be re-evaluating re like the approach you're taking to wanting to play the deck because if you don't have the knowledge base 
or at least the ability to find the knowledge base of how to build something that's incredibly basic that functions, then you're going to have a really hard time tweaking the deck in tournament environments, even if you're just trying to play it in a locals, and you're going to have a really bad time, because it's a very complex deck to try and alter if you don't understand the bare basics of it. So that was kind of the uh, the basis behind me memeing yesterday with, uh, with blurring out the deck list. I'm not going to do that for this video, uh, specifically because the deck list isn't shit. It's literally nothing. I have a bunch of other theories that I have going into the deck, but I just built something incredibly basic just for the purpose of uh, like playing for videos. Like There's many different things that I want to experiment with, like the frog engine I still really like, the nimble engine with just anglers and beavers, uh, but again, beaver is not really a card I'm trying to normal summon. I just want to be able to summon cards out of my deck off of nimble angler. Um, like There's a bunch of different things that are very well lent to this deck that I want to experiment with. But anyway, I'm not going to ramble on too much longer about that. I'm just going to end the video here because I got to play out a match against Trickster, so might as well publish it and edit it, right? Not necessarily in that order, but anyway. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to welcome you on board. If you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content, I'd love to welcome you to the channel. But links, as always, are in the description down below. It's in my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support my ability to continue creating videos because you like them and want to help quality improve and all that sort of stuff, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as getting you access into monthly giveaways for sizable amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh! product, usually around the size of a box or something comparable in value, as well as if you want to get access into my private Discord server with me and a bunch of other people or we chat on a daily basis, then definitely go check out the Patreon reward tiers and see if that is of any interest to you. And you'd have my thanks if there's any support you'd like to give to the channel. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You have about a lot more than you may know, as I always say, and you have my eternal gratitude. But as I've already said, thanks for watching and give me some feedback in the comments down below. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, Take care. I'll see you in the next video.